What's up Cooligans? It's the Coolian here, and today we're gonna give some tips and tricks on how to speed up your editing. Yo. So, you've just started out in the world of editing. Congratulations, it's a miserable life. But today, we're gonna talk about a few little tips and tricks that maybe you don't know about if you've just started out to help speed up your editing process. I've been editing for a really long time. I've been editing now for like, 15 years? I can take pride in one thing is that I'm a really fast editor. I'm gonna give you a little help. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna jump into the, to the program over here and uh, I'm just gonna give you a few just quick basic tips to help your workflow a little bit. Come on over. So the first tip you should really be starting from the very beginning of your project uh, is organizing. You should be organizing your footage so that things can be very easily found. So essentially how I like to set up my stuff is I usually have um, a few different folders here. I have media, which usually has, in this particular case, I have footage from three different spots. Um, I have uh, some drone footage, some iPhone footage, and this unboxing footage. If you haven't seen this episode, this is when I unboxed and crashed a drone because I'm terrible at flying them. And so I organize my footage in different bins over here so that I can quickly find what I'm looking for. Um, I might also sometimes have an audio bin. I didn't have enough audio in this one to warrant that, but keeping your footage and your media organized is a really, really quick and easy way to find what you're looking for and be able to pull things out of your project very quickly and very easily so you don't have to spend a lot of time looking for stuff. Side note, I also keep all my old sequences in this other sub little folder. So I keep things clean without clutter you can find what you're looking for really fast. Uh, pro tip, if you have a clip, in your timeline and you don't know where it is in your folders, you can always right click it and just head up to, where is it? Right here, reveal in project. And that's gonna find the exact spot where it is in your project files. Tip number two, know all your hotkeys. Uh, there's quite a few hotkeys and each one is gonna save you, I mean, seconds at a time, but they add up to saving you a plethora of time. Um, but I'll just show you a couple of the ones that are really key towards navigating your timeline and uh, just some quick cutting. If you take a look at my footage here, there's lots of little, little cuts that I've made throughout. The first hotkey to help you navigate the timeline is up and down. Up and down moves you from cut to cut. You see that, right? So that way you don't necessarily have to drag to the exact moment. You can just press up, press down, that moves you forward and backwards. You can also use home and end to jump to the beginning and end of your timeline. The second is Q and W, essential for speed cutting. What does Q and W do? Well, if we just zoom in here a little bit and we were to play a clip. Comedic gold. But let's say we want to trim that a little bit sooner. Well, I already have a crossfade in here. I already have a few different things set up here. The slow way of doing it would be to make a cut, a cut, select, delete, and move stuff over. However, all of that can be done with just a single press of the W button. What Q and W does is it trims either before to that point or after from that point. And so in this particular case, if I wanted to end the cut right here, I go to that place and I press W and now watch everything else shift over. And now, what's up? The fabulous part about that is that it's actually not only shortened the clip, moved everything over, but maintained the transition that I've already put in place. The same can be done for the beginning of the clip using Q. Let's say I wanted to jump into that clip in the middle of my hellos. If I wanted to start it over here, I'd move to that spot and press Q. It has erased everything before that point and shifted everything back, maintaining that crossfade. <laughs> the final hotkey I want to show you is the A button. Now, what that's going to do is change your cursor from a single arrow to two hours facing forward. Now, what does that mean? It selects everything where the cursor currently is and afterwards. So if I wanted to move everything over in order to make some space at the beginning, I can just click here and it selects everything and I can shift everything over. That stops me from having to zoom out and using the selection tool 
to choose everything in my timeline. So I'm gonna undo that and show you that it also works halfway through the sequence. Wow. Now the same thing can be done for backwards. All you have to do is hold shift when you're selecting A, and there you go. Now it's choosing everything behind. But what if I wanna move everything except for my music track that's located on A3? Well, that leads me to my next tip, locking and unlocking layers. If I wanna move everything here, but not move my music from its current position, I will use my A tool, but before selecting everything, I will head over here and lock this layer. This makes this layer entirely uneditable. Eh? 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 Once I'm done, I wanna make sure to unlock my layer because certain things I do in the future, I may want to have an effect on that layer. The fourth tip has to do with effects, and this applies to any effects, including scale, opacity, color, any kind of blur effects you put in there, any kind of audio effects you put in there, and that has to do with copying and pasting effects. Let's say I want to color this clip right over here and apply that to the rest of the unboxing footage. I'm gonna be doing that in Lumetri Color, which I'll be covering in a future video, and I'm just gonna do something absolutely ridiculous just for the sake of example. Let's say I wanted to make this look like absolute garbage. Yeah, looking fine, Julian, looking real fine. So I'll just put this dramatic effect on here just so that we can see the application of it over multiple clips. So right now, I've put this colored effect on this clip, but right after that clip, it reverts back to normal. Now there's two ways you can go about this. First is by clicking copy on that clip and then selecting all other clips, right clicking and saying paste attributes. A menu will come up asking what in particular you'd like to paste from that first clip into the rest. I'm gonna unclick motion. That's if I wanted to include scale and position. Really the only thing I wanna copy over to everything else is my color effect. By pressing okay, that effect has now been put over every single clip. If I wanted that done to only a couple of the clips, instead of selecting everything, I would just select the one that I want to apply it to. So I would just select these two, right click, click paste attributes, and boom. Beautiful. Now the other way you can do that is by heading to the effect controls panel. Finding the effect that you want to copy, clicking control C to copy, and then just choosing the clips that you want to paste it to, and then pressing Control-V to paste. I actually prefer the other way. It's a bit more accurate and clear as to what you're doing. I like that pop-up menu. It lets you select more than just the effects. If you've changed the scale of this image, it lets you apply it over all the clips that you want. Finally, only a few years ago did I discover the power of the Alt button. Let me show you what it does. Now usually, video and audio layers are locked together. When you trim the beginning or the end of the clip, the video and the audio move together. However, by holding Alt, you can actually control each one individually. That also means that you can select the audio or video individually and either move it or delete it. This can also be used with the razor tool, which will cut both the video and the audio simultaneously. However, again, if you're holding Alt, you can cut either the audio or the video independently. I hope this has been a bit of a help. Uh, this is my first editing video that I've done for the channel. I already have a request to cover Lumetri Color and to show color grading within Premiere. So that video is going to be coming up soon. But if you have anything within Premiere that you want me to cover, just let me know uh, in the comments. Like that. That's it, friends. Uh, I'm sorry there's not a lot of comedy in this episode. I think I made a joke at the beginning. and Hopefully that was enough for you. Uh, if you did come for the jokes, my apologies. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. And uh, I'll see you friends next time.